So Steve Jenks is here, and Steve, I'm going to do Steve. Steve is not my brother, but he is, I call him brother when I see him because he is a brother to me. And uh, Steve has, he's like an investigative journalist. He, he has been scouring um, the internet and other media and looking for facts about Kathy and Joe that you might not know about. And so he's prepared, you know, kind of a uh, journalistic report on their lives, and he's ready to report that in. Well, first, let me deny everything Gary just said. He basically paid me to do this, and he also uh, gave me the caveat that nothing that I say has to resemble the truth. <laughs> Well, you've seen some wonderful tributes here tonight, but I'm here to give you the lowdown on Joe and Kathy, the real dirt. And uh, our story begins on a dark and stormy night in Napa, Idaho. Nine long months of anticipation and labor were coming to fruition for the Perkle family as they awaited the arrival of their seventh child. And as with the previous pattern of girl boy, girl boy, girl boy, this was a baby girl. They would name her Kathy, Kathy, after her great aunt, Catherine, who was the concubine of Alexander, czar of all the Russias, and friend of privileges to the bad bunkers. At the tender age of one month, her parents whisked her away to the barren deserts of eastern Washington to a town named Ephrata, which in Hebrew means this place sucks. <laughs> With the chief source of employment was farming and the chief form of recreation was rock picking. <laughs> Eventually the Perkles realized their mistake and moved on down the valley to the paradise known as Quincy. <laughs> which in, Chinook, in the Chinook Indian language means Sucks a little less than a friend. <laughs> Here the rosy cheeked Kathy thrived and passed many a fun filled day in the sun, sitting in the dirt, kicking clods. Well, hell, we can't all live lives like Miley Cyrus. <laughs> Flash forward 54 days to another dark and stormy night, this time in Spokane where Frank and B. Wyman contemplated the arrival of their seventh child. Frank, perhaps, was hoping for power forward for the boys' basketball team he planned to father. B. was just praying for it all to be over. The five girls, Teresa, Jane, Joan, Rita, and Marie, were hoping for another baby sister. And Jim was holding out hope for a pony, or maybe a cocker spaniel puppy. <laughs> Anything as long as it wasn't another goddamn girl. <laughs> Frank and B to be some were to be somewhat disappointed. Frank was destined to fall one short in his quest to serve five boys. And though the child was a boy who would grow to great height, he was tragically cursed with a genetic disorder unique to the wine and males. <laughs> that prevents them from ever excelling at any sport that requires the touching of a ball. <laughs> None of the boys, with the exception of Mike, who was one lucky son of a bitch, can fish with a damn either. <laughs> And poor B still had three melon-headed winings to incubate and deliver. Jim at least was pleased that the new addition was a boy, and eventually he did get a puppy and a pony. <laughs> Unfortunately, doubt and suspicion soon followed the, the birth of the toe-headed Joe to the family of the dancing redheads. Something just wasn't right about that kid. <laughs> 